So how shall we start? There's more than one way to tell the story. I mean, just look at the Gospels. You would think that all the Gospels would start with the birth of Jesus. But Mark, the first Gospel to be written, starts with John the Baptist. Luke starts his gospel off with the dedication to Theophilus. Now, Theophilus' <laughs> name means friend of God or lover of God, so it's really dedicated to all of us. But then who does he turn his attention to next? John the Baptist. Matthew starts with a long genealogy. We'll talk more about that later. But he did that to prove that Jesus was related to King David, which is what the prophets predicted. Then the gospel writer introduces Jesus' birth. The Gospel of John, now not John the Baptist, another John, simply says that Jesus has existed forever since the beginning of time. It's beautiful. It's lovely poetry. But we'll save that for another day, Christmas Eve to be exact, at 6 p.m. Not 5 p.m., not 8 p.m., but 6 p.m. Remind your parents. So why do these stories start with John the Baptist? Because John was very popular and some people liked him just as much or more than Jesus. And the gospel writers wanted people to know that, yes, John's birth was, a, was miraculous too, but he wasn't the Messiah, the Savior, the one who saves, the Son of God who would let people know that God loves them no matter what. God with us. So again, where should we begin? Let's start with Mary in the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, this is a reference to Elizabeth's pregnancy. Elizabeth was Mary's relative and the mother of John the Baptist. We'll hear more about her later from the angel Gabriel. But in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. We asked the kids other ways of saying greetings, and this is what they came up with. Hello. Bonjour. Hola. Aloha. Good talk. Yasu. Hey. Grüß Gott. Hi. Yo. What's up? What's up? Great job. The Bible goes on to say that Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Maybe Mary's expression looked like this. The angel went on to say, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? Let's hear the kids do it. First Gabriel, and then Mary. Do not be afraid. 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 How can this be? How can this be? The kids were asked other ways of saying, how could this be? And this is what they came up with. What do you mean? What are you talking about? What's going on? What's going on? And the angel said, oh my, you're adorable. No, only kidding. The angel said to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. That bears repeating. Nothing is impossible with God. 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 Amen. And then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed. Now let's go over to Bethlehem in the Gospel of Matthew to hear Joseph's story. 
In order to set the scene for Joseph, let's start at the very beginning of the gospel and see if that doesn't help put Joseph to sleep. The genealogy of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac of Jacob, Jacob of Judah and his brothers, Judah of Perez and Zerah. Their mother was Tamar, Perez of Hezron, Hezron of Ram, Ram of Aminadab. Thank you, Pat. I think they're all asleep. Reading from Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Let's watch. Indeed, Joseph would go on to have one of the best jobs in the whole world, but he doesn't get any lines in scripture. All of this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. Let's listen. Look, no, no I mean listen. A young girl will have a baby and they will call him him. I thought his name was Jesus. And he all means God with us. And Jesus was God. Yep. And Jesus was human. Exactly. You got it. I don't get it. Jesus was God. Jesus was human. That's confusing. I know. And then, as we know, Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem. And we read, while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Let's pause and talk about that. A couple weeks ago, I said, hey, the Gospel of Matthew says that Joseph was actually from Bethlehem. And let's go with that. And then I said, but hey. Hey, in the Gospel of Luke, it says there was no room for them in the inn. Don't jump there. We'll talk about it in a couple of weeks. Well, here we are. The Greek word that is translated as inn in Luke is also elsewhere found in Scripture to describe the upper room. It's a guest room. You could translate it, and there was no room for them in the guest room. Most of us were raised with the story that Jesus was born in a barn outside. But here's the thing. A biblical scholar who lived in the Middle East just could not believe, knowing the people, knowing the culture, that they would allow this woman to have a baby in a barn. And he researched it, and there's actually houses that still exist today that are like this, but on the, in, in homes of that time, the first floor, there would... the the entryway, there would be a place to bring in your animals at night to keep them warm, to protect them from predators. And the houses were constructed so that there would be like a, f a few steps up. Can you see that? So you'd come in and there'd be like a, a stable area and then there would be steps up to the main level where they would 
have a hearth, which means like a fireplace, and they would cook their food, and that's where they would eat. And it was kind of a multi-purpose space. And then some, some families would have a cataluma, a guest room. Now, everybody's been, you know, called to Bethlehem for the census, and it says there's no room for them in the guest room. So, it is believed that they left Mary and Joseph the main room to have the baby, and they put the baby in a manger. Now, along, let me turn this way, because I, I, I got the, the, the little manger from the Sunday school room. So along those steps up in the house, there would be troughs. So for when the animals stood up, they could feed right from the, from the ledge there into the troughs. And they would place baby Jesus into one of those troughs, placing the baby in the manger. Makes a lot of sense. And it doesn't change the story that much. Uh, and it may, well, yeah. There you have it. Let's get back to those cute kids who are now shepherds. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God. 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 When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste. And they went and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard as it had been told them. Salmon of Boaz, his mother was Rahab. Boaz of Obed, his mother was Ruth. Obed of Jesse, Jesse uh, was the father of King David. 